This uh, video is about linear stability analysis. The first um, system we're going to look at is a differential equation. with one independent variable. So this is a system where x, or let's say dx by dt, the rate of change of x with time, which we're going to call x dot, is equal to some function of x. There are no other variables. The only variable we have is x, or there's time, but time is just moving forward. The only thing which changes with time is x. So um, with this um, system, what we can do, we're going to consider a system where uh, f of x is sine of x. And what we can do is plot something which I think is a vector field where we... Um, and plot f of x vertically and x horizontally and um, if we have a uh, sine of x then we're going to have um, something like this as uh, our curve. Now, um, this f of x is equal to the rate of change of x with time. So the first point to make is that if we have x dot equals zero, we have a fixed point and so all these points here are fixed points so at these fixed points x dot is equal to zero so once the system of one variable is at one of these fixed points it can't move so, um, now, right, so we're going to call these at, uh, at fixed points, we'll say x is equal to x star, just to show that it's a fixed point. Um, now, when f of x is positive, so the rate of change of x is positive, so we can draw little arrows in when it's positive to show the direction that x will change in. And similarly, when f of x is negative, we can draw little arrows in to show the way that uh, x is going to move. Now, what that means is if we're here um, just below 0 for x, then f of x is negative, that means the rate of change of x with time is negative, and we will move in that direction from zero towards this point here. Now, um, so it's really helpful to uh, see this. So it effectively, what these arrows do is they show the direction of travel how the system evolves with time. Now, um, uh, so from this, from these arrows, it should be clear that the points which I'm now shaded in, in, in this, these points which I'm shading here, these are
stable fixed points. Because if we move slightly to the left or slightly to the right of them, the system will evolve with time so that they, uh, ret it returns there. Whereas, by contrast, uh, the open circles, which are also fixed points, so um, here and here, for example, these are unstable fixed points. So, for example, if you start at zero and you get uh, moved slightly away from zero or slightly above or lower, then if you move slightly above, then you'll start moving across uh, this way over um, to the stable point. Okay, so this is these arrows really show uh, the way the system evolves. And this is one way of doing some analysis to see whether points are stable or unstable. Now, um, it's good to be more quantitative to get some, uh, a, 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 rather than having to plot a, a graph. I mean, I think the graph is great. It really shows what's happening. But if we do some quantitative analysis, first point we're going to make here is that the function of, of x star is going to equal zero. So, or which is of course equal to the rate of change of x. So the rate of change of x is equal to zero when we're at a fixed point. Now, what we need to do is consider the point x star plus epsilon, where epsilon is a little bit. Now, the way that that evolves with time is going to depend on, so the rate of change of x, in this case, is going to be equal f of x star plus epsilon. That's um, dx by dt. We could also say that that's actually equal to um, dx star plus epsilon by dt. Okay, now if we do a Taylor expansion of the left-hand side, then we can say, well, we could say it's approximately equal to f of x star plus epsilon times f prime of x star plus some higher terms of epsilon squared, etc. Now, um, so that well, in fact, if we look at that carefully, we've already said um, here that um, uh, f of x star is equal to zero. So this first term is equal to zero. And if epsilon is small, then uh, the epsilon squared and higher terms are approximately equal to zero. So what that leaves us with is epsilon times f primed of x star. Now, if we look at um, the uh, differential here, then that's equal to, it's the same as the rate of change of x star with time plus the rate of change of epsilon with time. But of course, um, 
x star is a fixed point and it doesn't move. So x star is a constant. So that first part is zero. So what we have now is we've got a differential equation for epsilon. And it's a nice simple uh, differential equation. The solution here is that um, epsilon at time t is going to be equal to epsilon at time zero times um, e to the power of f prime of x star times time. That is a straightforward uh, differential equation uh, to solve. It's, uh, it's a simple form. It's exactly the same as, say, radioactive decay or something. Just from this, um, just from this uh, equation that we derived up here. Okay. So, um, now, if we look at this, it should be clear that if f primed of x star is equal to, uh, is, well, let's not say it's equal to, if it's less than zero, if it's negative, then we have a stable point because as t goes to infinity epsilon will go to zero but if f prime of x star is greater than zero then we have an unstable point because as t goes to infinity, epsilon will go to infinity. Although, having said that, um, as time goes to infinity, our approximation that epsilon is small uh, will, will fail. So epsilon probably won't go to infinity, but as far as we're concerned here, it will certainly move away from the x star stable point. Okay, so there's one other case to consider, and that's if f primed of x star is equal to zero, and if that's the case, if that was the case, then this term here, that term would go to zero, and that would mean that we would have to do uh, an analysis on the uh, epsilon squared term. So we don't actually know what the answer would be in, in that case. Okay. Now, if we go back to look at the... Um, uh, to, to look at the diagram above, we'll notice that here and here at the stable fixed points, if you look at them closely, you'll see that the gradient of f of x, f prime of x at those points, is indeed negative. And if you look at the uh, unstable points, which I'm just circling now in yellow, um, with those points there, they uh, have a gradient which is positive. F um, uh, prime of x star uh, is equal to zero. Um, okay, so that is um, a way of um, finding about out about the stability of a simple one independent variable differential equation system if um, uh, if we use um, 
uh, a graphical method here, and there's a more quantitative uh, method of looking at it uh, here below. And it's, it's quantitative because you get a value for uh, f prime of x, and the more negative it is, the faster it will go to the stable, or the more stable the fixed point will be, and the more positive it is, the more unstable it will be. Uh, an example of this, of course, is uh, radioactive decay. Where dn, your number of radioactive nuclei, dn by dt, is equal to minus some constant times n. And in that case, if you differentiate that function of n, you're going to get minus lambda. And so it's a stable system. And we know in radioactive decay, ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to go towards um, having zero radioactive uh, nuclei because they'll all decay. Okay, right.